In differential geometry, the Gaussian curvature or Gauss curvature kappa of a surface at her point is the product of the principal curvatures, kappa 1 and kappa 2, at the given point. For example, a sphere of radius r has Gaussian curvature 1, r2 everywhere, and a flat plane and a cylinder have Gaussian curvature 0 everywhere. The Gaussian curvature can also be negative, as in the case of a hyperboloid or the inside of a torus. Gaussian curvature is an intrinsic measure of curvature, depending only on distances that are measured on the surface, not on the way it is isometrically embedded in any space. This is the content of the theorem or egregium. Gaussian curvature is named after Carl Friedrich Gauss who published the theorem or egregium in 1827. In formal definition, for most points on most surfaces, different sections will have different curvatures, the maximum and minimum values of these are called the principal curvatures, call these kappa 1, kappa 2. The Gaussian curvature is the product of the two principal curvatures kappa equals kappa 1, kappa 2. The sign of the Gaussian curvature can be used to characterize the surface. If both principal curvatures are the same sign, kappa 1 kappa 2 greater than 0, then the Gaussian curvature is positive and the surface is said to have an elliptic point. At such points the surface will be dome-like, locally lying on one side of its tangent plane. All sectional curvatures will have the same sign. If the principal curvatures have different signs, kappa 1 kappa 2 less than 0, then the Gaussian curvature is negative and the surface is said to have a hyperbolic point. At such points the surface will be saddle-shaped. For two directions the sectional curvatures will be zero giving the asymptotic directions. If one of the principal curvatures is zero, kappa 1 kappa 2 equals zero. The Gaussian curvature is zero and the surface is said to have a parabolic point. Most surfaces will contain regions of positive Gaussian curvature and regions of negative Gaussian curvature separated by a curve of points with zero Gaussian curvature called a parabolic line. Relation to geometries When a surface has a constant zero Gaussian curvature then it is a developable surface and the geometry of the surface is Euclidean geometry. When a surface has a constant positive Gaussian curvature then it is a sphere and the geometry of the surface is spherical geometry. When a surface has a constant negative Gaussian curvature then it is a pseudo-spherical surface and the geometry of the surface is hyperbolic geometry. Further informal discussion. In differential geometry, the two principal curvatures at a given point of a surface are the eigenvalues of the shape operator at the point. They measure how the surface bends by different amounts in different directions at that point. We represent the surface by the implicit function theorem as the graph of a function f of two variables in such a way that the point P is a critical point, i.e., the gradient of F vanishes. Then the Gaussian curvature of the surface of P is the determinant of the Hessian matrix of F. This definition allows one immediately to grasp the distinction between cup, cap versus saddle point. Alternative definitions. It is also given by where is the covariant derivative and G is the metric tensor. At a point P on a regular surface in R3, the Gaussian curvature is also given by where S is the shape operator. A useful formula for the Gaussian curvature is Liouville's equation in terms of the Laplacian in isothermal coordinates. Total curvature. The surface integral of the Gaussian curvature over some region of a surface is called the total curvature. The total curvature of a geodesic triangle equals the deviation of the sum of its angles from pi. The sum of the angles of a triangle on a surface of positive curvature will exceed pi, while the sum of the angles of a triangle on a surface of negative curvature will be less than pi. On a surface of zero curvature, such as the Euclidean plane, the angles will sum to precisely pi radians. A more general result is the gauss bonnet theorem. Important theorems. Theorem or egregium Gauss's theorem or egregium states that Gaussian curvature of a surface can be determined from the measurements of length on the surface itself. In fact, 
It can be found given the full knowledge of the first fundamental form and expressed via the first fundamental form and its partial derivatives of first and second order. Equivalently, the determinant of the second fundamental form of a surface in R3 can be so expressed. The remarkable and surprising feature of this theorem is that although the definition of the Gaussian curvature of a surface S in R3 certainly depends on the way in which the surface is located in space, the end result, the Gaussian curvature itself, is determined by the intrinsic metric of the surface without any further reference to the ambient space. It is an intrinsic invariant. In particular, the Gaussian curvature is invariant under isometric deformations of the surface. In contemporary differential geometry, a surface, viewed abstractly, is a two-dimensional differentiable manifold. To connect this point of view with the classical theory of surfaces, such an abstract surface is embedded into R3 and endowed with the Riemannian metric given by the first fundamental form. Suppose that the image of the embedding is a surface S in R3. A local isometry is a diffeomorphism F. UV between open regions of R3 whose restriction to SU is an isometry onto its image. Theorem or egregium is then stated as follows. The Gaussian curvature of an embedded smooth surface in R3 is invariant under the local isometries. For example, the Gaussian curvature of a cylindrical tube is zero, the same as for the unrolled tube. On the other hand, since a sphere of radius R has constant positive curvature R minus 2 and a flat plane has constant curvature zero, these two surfaces are not isometric, even locally. Thus any planar representation of even a part of a sphere must distort the distances. Therefore, no cartographic projection is perfect. Gauss-Bonnet theorem The Gauss-Bonnet theorem links the total curvature of a surface to its Euler characteristic and provides an important link between local geometric properties and global topological properties. Surfaces of constant curvature Mindings theorem states that all surfaces with the same constant curvature K are locally isometric. A consequence of Mindings theorem is that any surface whose curvature is identically zero can be constructed by bending some plane region. Such surfaces are called developable surfaces. Minding also raised the question whether a closed surface with constant positive curvature is necessarily rigid. Liebman's theorem answered Minding's question. The only regular closed surfaces in R3 with constant positive Gaussian curvature are spheres. If a sphere is deformed it does not remain a sphere, proving that a sphere is rigid. A standard proof uses Hilbert's lemma that points of extreme principal curvature have non-positive Gaussian curvature. Hilbert's theorem states that there exists no complete analytic regular surface in R3 of constant negative Gaussian curvature. In fact, the conclusion also holds for surfaces of class C2 immersed in R3, but breaks down for C1 surfaces. The pseudosphere has constant negative Gaussian curvature except at its singular cusp. Alternative formulas Gaussian curvature of a surface in R3 can be expressed as the ratio of the determinants of the second and first fundamental forms. The Brioschi formula gives Gaussian curvature solely in terms of the first fundamental form. For an orthogonal parametrization, Gaussian curvature is for a surface described as graph of a function z equals f, Gaussian curvature is. For a surface f equals zero, the Gaussian curvature can be expressed in terms of the gradient and Hessian matrix. For a surface with metric conformal to the Euclidean one, so f equals zero and e equals g equals e sigma, the Gauss curvature is given by. Gaussian curvature is the limiting difference between the circumference of a geodesic circle and a circle in the plane. Gaussian curvature is the limiting difference between the area of a geodesic disk and a disk in the plane. Gaussian curvature may be expressed with the Christoffel symbols.